Hi, Sarah. Hello, hi, lovely to meet you. Thanks so much for taking the time to speak to us. Can you kick off with a brief introduction to Rebel Moon? What can people expect from this film? Well, Rebel Moon, you can expect emotion, you can expect worlds you've never seen before, a lore that you need to sit down and really take in. Uh, you can accept a story about that you, sorry, expect, accept, you can also accept, but mainly expect a story about a few against the many. And it's, you know, it's a, it's, a, it's, a, it's, a, it's a story that whilst it is set in the magnitude of space, it is ultimately about heroes. We're not talking superheroes. These people are flawed. These people are on the path to redemption. And, 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 and I really believe what we've created here, as, as wild and as otherworldly as it is, it's rooted aesthetically and in terms of the narrative in something that is relatable to the individual. I answered all my questions already. No, I'm kidding. Um, t tell us a bit about your character. Why did you want to play him? How did you prepare to play him? Uh, why I wanted to play Tarek, a big Zack Snyder fan, off the bat, very, very just to play it to say it clearly. Um, also, you know, I, I'm a fantasist. I grew up on Lord of the Rings, Harry Potter, Star Wars. Me and my wife fell in love watching Star Wars. So to be a part of of, of something so big and so larger than life. And with its own new IP, was just we're just we're just a dream, a dream come true. To tell you a bit about Tarek, uh, when we find Tarek, he's kind of trying to fill the void that was left after having to leave his planet for reasons that we'll find out later down the line. And like many of us, I think the core theme that we see here throughout this movie, looking at the individual archetypes, is is redemption, the need for redemption, the desire for redemption, the opportunity to finally stand up again. And this is very much uh, Tarek's core. You know, the, the the man the man lost everything and finally feels get he, like he's got a chance at finding a sense of purpose again, a reason to stand up again. And uh, it's a wonderful journey. I'm so grateful that Zach gave me so much to work with. I think part two is going to give you a lot more. In terms of part two, there's a real opportunity for you guys to dive into the relationships between the, the seven, the main seven. The backstories will really start informing the character. I always have to say part one and part two are called part one and part two for a reason. They are, this is not movie one and movie two. It's like reading a book and being so busy that for some reason you have to stop it for three months and then finishing it. The, the arc stops at part one halfway and then it carries on so they it is one beautiful piece that needed to be split to really fully tell the story and i mean everything as is expected you know in a zack snyder film you know on such an epic scale such complete world building stunts etc incredible cast what on earth was it like being on this set what were some of the highs and lows i think i mean at first overwhelming you know i i've, I've gotten to not only work with but make friends with people that i grew up admiring people that i grew up watching and to call them my peers and my friends is 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 uh is unbelievable but that boils down to zach and his ability to forge camaraderie between the cast we were all in this equal journey this equal kind of through hell or high leather drive and desire to, to pull this off physically emotionally and it meant that it drew us so close before we even started you know i you know with everyone says that but uh, you know that yeah we all got along but i think that always reflects in the work and the interviews, and I know people will see that this is a genuine. I'm not tired. I'm not tired. It's sexy. Yeah, it reflects, as I just said, it reflects in the friendships and the relationships that that came came about thanks to Zach's willingness to put us through it. The legend. Yeah. The legend. The, legend, the man, the myth, the legend. So there you go. There's, there's so much of that that, that is it's never been done before, at least in my experience. So it's uh, the, 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 seldom do I find the words to, 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 to express how this all how this all feels. But they're amazing, otherworldly. One second, I just got <laughs> All right, I love you. Sorry. Sorry, no, no, that's 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 my my home, my home met my person. She was actually with me at Christmas uh, last year. Yeah, this is family right there. We were very lucky with the bonds we forged, and I think again going back to Zach, it was a testament to him having this rigorous system, this military like military esque system that. But we were in the gym every day and on the weekends, and if we were filming at 12, 15 hours and 107 degrees Fahrenheit, we'd still find a gym. And as rigorous and as tough as it was, it was an opportunity to really bond in a way that we suffer in solidarity. I think in many ways, and that really resonated with I think all of us which is when which meant that once we were actually filming the movie we were all like oh you get it I get it 
Claude. Yeah. Listen, uh, Rice Burrows, Rice Burrows, 1936. He came out with uh, John Carter, one of the first embryonic kind of uh, concepts that uh, to, that gave us like Star Wars and everything like that. You know, him and Akira Kurosawa, we wouldn't be here without them. Star Wars wouldn't be here without them either. So yes, I mean there was there was John Carter. I, I, I think also what I wanted to do, and I hope it resonated. I think it was to play it to play it transparently. I could have just been you know the kind of the whole people and and. and I really felt there was an opportunity reading the reading, oh, you know, the, the way that Zach wanted him to be. A level of sensitivity, a level of intimacy, a connection to something far greater than himself, a humility versus an outward need to be great and big. So it's like Conan the Barbarian with some therapy or something. You know what I mean? It's like the guy that there's, there's an internal dialogue that goes on that resonates far more than his need for to be something.